we'll get straight into it. The first aspect and first of these of this three part uh, presentation is developing an effective library of recovery uh, techniques, <clears throat> and you can draw on these um, throughout training over pre-season, off-season, uh, and particularly in 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 season where we want to really ramp up your recovery and be quite aggressive in your recovery methods. Obviously, in the off-season, we more want to elicit adaptation, uh, and the recovery you're going to get is just time away uh, from the club. Uh, and then pre-season, same thing, we're focusing on getting in the training, so recovery is not so much an emphasis. We want to save uh, the recovery so we get maximum benefit from it, from those methods in in season where it becomes a bit more of a novelty where if you just constantly be doing the same thing over and over again it's like anything um you're not going to reap the same amount of benefits so uh, focus majority of your time and energy on using these techniques in in season next key areas have a process that you stick to so routine is so important more important than the next fancy thing or um, whatever you read is the most important the recovery stuff changes all the time um, you'll hear pros and cons for ice baths, pros and cons for sauna at different temperatures. Ge generally speaking, as long as you've got a routine that you feel better for after the game and it helps you sleep, you're onto a winner. The next day, as long as you're doing some form of low-level recovery and your body feels better for it after it and the next day, you're onto a good thing. And same thing for two days post. As long as you're doing some sort of movement, active recovery, mobility, you're restoring your range of motion uh, and you're feeling better for it, then um then you're gonna um know that you're onto a good thing and yes we can use objective measures like with afl athletes we'll use things like force plays to check their power and see how well they've recovered um you know two to three days post the game to see how well they've neurally recovered typically and number three what you believe works best so particularly for the coaches out there it's really important that you bring the athletes along for the ride don't just put on um spreadsheets or just um, send them protocols to follow actually get an insight into what works best for them because as we know with the research typically if an athlete feels like they're benefiting from the recovery methodology then we know that they're going to get a positive response from it so the placebo in when it comes to recovery is huge um, placebo is probably really important with anything to do with performance but when it comes to working with athletes and their preparation but even more so when it comes to recovery so unless it's an education aspect where like of course if an athlete for example had a corky and they're spending an hour getting a deep tissue massage in that area and cupping um we want to let the athlete know that's not the right decision uh, and hence why you haven't pulled up well from that um recovery choice we want to be focusing on more cold uh, and ice and just gentle movement rather than just um, creating more um, blood in the area and lastly, our workout for this week is a cross-training swim program. So it's a great aerobic program. I've used it quite regularly. I've done this one myself. So you go for a five-minute steady state warm-up just to get your rhythm with with swimming uh, and then from, just keep that at a relaxed pace, just an efficient way to warm up basically and just get your rhythm with swimming. Then you're going to do eight 25-meter efforts every 45 seconds. Should take 30 seconds on, 15 seconds off typically. Six 50 meter reps every 90 seconds. So hopefully we're sticking around that 60 seconds of work, 30 seconds off that two to one work to rest ratio. It's an aerobic workout. So that's what we want here. And then 400 meter efforts um, for swimming. And then every three minutes, this is of course with freestyle. You probably could do it with backstroke if you're a proficient backstroker. Um, I would definitely struggle with breaststroke or butterfly, but freestyle is the one to go for. Um, give it a go. Let me know. It should take you about 30 minutes, and it's a great way to just get the heart rate up early in the week.